Hey everyone, welcome to Cyber Platter. I am Navya. This is the series on GRC interview question and answers. This is part two. The link to part one is in the description box. Let's get started. Question Can you describe what compliance management means in an organization? Compliance management is the process of ensuring that an organization follows all laws, regulations, standards, and internal policies that are relevant to its industry. So it involves creating systems, procedures and controls to detect, prevent and respond to compliance issues. Now let's look at some key elements of compliance management. First one, policy development. Here you define clear rules and guidelines for employees and processes. Then you regularly check operations to ensure then you regularly check operations to ensure compliance that is under monitoring and auditing. Risk assessment that is identifying areas where non-compliance could occur. So risk assessment is primarily part of the R that is risk in GRC, right? Since it focuses on identifying, analyzing and mitigating risks. But in compliance management as well, risk assessment is relevant. That is because organizations assess the risk of non-compliance, for example, fines, laws, reputational harm. So compliance teams often perform compliance risk assessments to prioritize which laws, regulations or policies need to get the most attention. So in short, risk in GRC is broader. It covers financial, operational, cyber, reputational risks. But in compliance management, risk assessment is specifically looking at the risks of non-complying with laws, regulations or standards. Okay, let's go to the next key element of compliance management that is training and awareness. Here we educate employees about regulations and policies. Next is to keep detailed records of regulators and internal review. Another key element is corrective actions that is taking steps to fix non-compliance issues quickly. These are some of the key elements of compliance management. Now let's look at the importance of compliance management. First, it prevents fines, lawsuits and sanctions. That is, it avoids legal penalties. Compliance management builds trust with customers, investors and regulators. That is, it is protecting reputation. Compliance management improves efficiency because standardized processes reduce errors and risks. It also supports broader risk management, that is, it prevents financial, operational and reputational damage. Now let's look at some examples of compliance management. Healthcare, hospitals follow HIPAA to protect patient data. Finance, banks comply with SOX and AML laws to prevent fraud. Tech companies, these firms comply with GDPR for customer data protection. In manufacturing, companies follow OSHA safety regulations to protect workers. Next question, can you explain the process of developing a compliance program? Let's look at a step-by-step -step guide on developing a compliance program. First step is to identify applicable laws, regulations and industry standards like for example HIPAA, SOX or GDPR. And then you perform a compliance risk assessment to find areas of potential non-compliance. For example, a hospital might end up identifying high-risk areas like patient data handling and billing practices. After the compliance risk assessment, the next step is to create clear policies outlining rules and expectations for employees. Develop procedures detailing how compliance will be maintained day to day. For example, draft a HIPAA privacy policy explaining data access, retention and sharing protocols. Next is to assign roles and responsibilities. That is, you designate a compliance officer or team to oversee the program. Assign responsibilities to relevant departments like for example IT, HR or finance. So it might be like 
IT managers access controls, HR handles staff training and finance monitors billing compliance. Next step is to conduct regular training for employees and this is to ensure they understand compliance requirements. You need to make training mandatory for new hires and refreshers for existing staff. For example, you could conduct HIPAA workshops for clinical and administrative staff. Next is to use audits, automated monitoring tools and internal checks to track compliance. You need to create reporting channels for potential violations or concerns. For example, you could implement logging systems to monitor who accesses patient's records. Next step is to respond and correct issues. That is, you investigate violations promptly and take corrective action. So you need to update policies and procedures as regulations or risks evolve. For example, if there is a data breach, then you need to notify authorities, remediate the vulnerability and retrain your staff. Next part is continuous improvement. That is, you regularly review and update the program to stay aligned with regulations. You need to learn from audits, incidents and industry best practices. For example, you could conduct an annual HIPAA program review to incorporate new guidance from the Department of Health and Human Services. So in short, a compliance program is developed by assessing risks, creating policies, assigning responsibilities, training employees, monitoring adherence, addressing issues and continuously improving. Let's go to the next question. How do you stay current with evolving compliance requirements? You could start by saying that you follow government websites, regulatory bodies and industry authorities. Example, for HIPAA, you could monitor updates from the US Department of Health and Human Services. Next, you could sign up for compliance newsletters, bulletins and industry updates. For example, receiving updates from ISO or SOX regulatory bodies. Next, you could join industry groups, forums or associations to learn from peers. For example, attending compliance webinars or LinkedIn groups for risk management professionals. Next is to attend workshops, seminars and refresher courses. For example, completing annual HIPAA compliance training. Next, you could use GRC software for automated monitoring and alerts. Like for example, implementing a GRC tool that flags regulatory changes impacting financial reporting. Next, you could maintain close communication with internal or external legal advisors. For example, regular meetings with the legal team to review changes in labor laws or data protection regulations. So you could give all of these examples or some of them and say that this is how you stay compliant with evolving compliance requirements. Next question, what tools or software have you used to manage integrated GRC initiatives? So what is integrated GRC first? So it is a unified approach where governance, risk and compliance activities are managed together instead of in isolated silos. So it creates a single framework that allows organizations to make better decisions, reduce duplication and improve efficiency. Now let's look at some tools or software for integrated GRC initiatives. First one, RSA Archer. This is used for enterprise risk management, compliance tracking, policy management and audit. Next one is Metric Stream. This is widely adopted for integrated GRC. It offers modules for risk, compliance, audits and vendor management. Next is ServiceNow GRC. This provides workflows to integrate risk, compliance and governance into IT service management. 
Next is SAP GRC. This is strong in access control, process control and risk management for large enterprises. Next, there is Logic Manager. This is good for mid-sized organizations and it focuses on risk registers and compliance reporting. And then there are some risk and compliance management tools. For example, Audit Board. This is for audit management and compliance workflows. And then there is Navex Global. This is for compliance, ethics and risk reporting. Then there is Diligent GRC that is used for governance, board management and compliance documentation. Then there are some supporting tools as well. These are not full GRC but part of the integration. First one, Power BI or Tableau. This is used for dashboards and integrated GRC reporting. Then Jira and Confluence. These are sometimes used for workflow tracking and documentation in risk or compliance processes. So you don't have to list all of these tools. This is only for your understanding. So instead of listing these tools, you could just answer by saying that, you know, in your experience, you have worked with tools like uh, RSA Archer and ServiceNow GRC to manage integrated GRC initiatives. These platforms helped us centralize risk registers, automate compliance workflows and generate real-time dashboards for leadership. Additionally, I have used Power BI to integrate data from these tools for executive reporting. What I found most valuable is how these solutions break down silos and give a single view of risk and compliance. I also want to mention that I can adapt quickly to new systems since most follow similar principles of risk registers, compliance workflows and reporting dashboards. Next question, describe your experience with GRC implementation. So let's use star method to answer this that is a situation, task, action and result. First is the situation. In my previous role, the organization was struggling with siloed risk management and compliance processes. Different teams used spreadsheets and manual reporting, which was time consuming and which also created inefficiencies and audit challenges. After situations, you need to explain your task that is your responsibility. So you could say my responsibility was to support the implementation of a GRC platform. ServiceNow, ServiceNow GRC, RSA Archer, Metric Stream, you can adjust this to your experience. This was to integrate governance, risk and compliance activities into a single framework. I needed to ensure scalability, transparency and automation. Next action, I partnered with business, IT and compliance teams to gather requirements. And then I configured modules for risk registers, compliance workflows and policy management. I integrated the tool with existing systems like for example Active Directory for access control. And then I designed dashboards for real-time risk reporting and automated alerts. And then trained end users and created process documentation. These are the actions that you took. Next is the results. So as a result, we reduced manual reporting efforts by 40%, improved audit readiness and provided leadership with a single view of organizational risks and compliance status. The implementation also increased cross-team collaboration since all risk and compliance activities were tracked in one system. So all in all, I created a scalable integrated GRC framework. This is how you answer this question. But if you lack direct tool experience, you could alternatively also say that while I have not led a full GRC implementation, I have been part of projects where I contributed to requirements gathering, testing and user adoption. 
I am familiar with platforms like Archer and ServiceNow GRC and I understand how they integrate governance, risk and compliance into workflows. I am confident that I can quickly adapt and add value in a full-scale implementation. So if you don't have tool experience, you could say that. But if you have tool experience, always make sure that you name the specific tool, describe the modules or workflows you worked on and highlight a tangible outcome that is time saved, risk reduced or audit readiness improved. Next question, what are the benefits and challenges of automating GRC processes? First, let's talk about the benefits of automating GRC. First one is efficiency and time savings. So it reduces manual work that is spreadsheets or emails. It automates workflows for risk assessments, compliance checks and audits. Next is accuracy and consistency. So it minimizes human errors. It standardizes processes across departments. Next one is real-time monitoring and reporting. So the dashboards and alerts give instant visibility into risks and compliance status. It also supports faster decision making. Next one is audit readiness and traceability. So automated record keeping ensures evidence is always available for audits. It also helps with easy tracking of changes and approvals. Next is scalability. It grows with the organization without proportional increase in resources. So these are the benefits of automating GRC. Let's, now let's look at the challenges. GRC platforms like Archer, Metricstream, ServiceNow GRC can be expensive. It has a complex integration, like for example, it requires connecting with existing systems like HR, IT or finance. And data silos can cause delays. And employees may resist new processes or lack training. It requires strong adoption strategy. Also, balancing flexibility with standardized workflows can be difficult. And then there is ongoing maintenance that is continuous updates for new regulations and evolving risks. And it also requires dedicated support and governance. So in short, automating GRC processes provides efficiency, accuracy and real-time insights. But the main challenges are cost, integration and adoption. So successful organizations focus on phased implementation, user training and aligning automation with business needs. So always remember that the interviewers would love if you mention both sides and a mitigation strategy like I just mentioned, phased rollout, user training or executive sponsorship. And that's it for today guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like today's video, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share our videos. That helps us a lot. I will see you in another video with more questions on GRC. Thank you.